would be stated so I could understand how in the world we got here. It would be the same treatment you get back in return. I don't yeah, well, need you. Get this I'm not your with. family. Okay, I'm not your you're son. I'm pregnant with your child, but I really want to go pursue a relationship. So All I... you had to do was call. I get so angry at myself. Like, I don't ask him for money. I don't ask him for anything, but... She was your daughter, or were you writing to her because you just passing the time? Angela Monroe, a terminally ill woman, opens her soul to the court. Her son, Herbert Monroe, departed this world in 2015, and in a cruel twist of fate, she Seneca Reed reveals she's carrying Herbert's child. Angela, seeking solace in the truth, turns to the court to confirm if Ayanna Monroe, born in 2016, is indeed her granddaughter. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions as we uncover this complex and heart wrenching family saga. The court recently received the following submission from the plaintiff My name is Angela Monroe. My son Herbert died on January 27th, 2015. After my son passed, a young lady named Shanika Reed which is the defendant, told me that she was pregnant from my son. The baby was born on May 31st, 2016. The drama is sky high as Angela unravels the tale of Jerome, her cousin's son, seeking refuge for his pregnant girlfriend, Shanika, due to Angela's poor health. What was supposed to be a brief stay spirals into a maze of complications. Had you met Ms. Monroe? Did you meet his mother? Yes, I did meet her. And, and he introduced you as his girlfriend or? No, friend. And the thing about that was our apartment, me and my son's apartment. No, you do we even really... said you even said this is Ian's apartment. She when you get an apartment, Ian, because when that's you his get an name. apartment, said that. it's two people on the lease. So my name and my son's name. Tensions flare, and the courtroom becomes a battleground as Angela and Shaneka lock horns over conflicting timelines, doubts, and a storm of disrespect. Judge Lake, the mediator in this emotional storm, strives to restore order, unraveling the threads of truth surrounding. Ayana's paternity. Financially with Ayana. They supposed to. I told you I wasn't doing nothing so, else because the way you talk to me until you got a DNA. And that's fine. We still, Ayana's still good. We still good. We only here to collect the benefits that you recommended that, I collect. That's, no, I collect. I, I said that only way you get anything is if you do a DNA. You don't get nothing no, until you do you a DNA. That, I didn't even know that I could collect benefits. Yes, you. Hold on to your hearts as Angela takes the stage, testifying about her complex relationship with Jerome Reed, the father of her late son's child. Secrets, tensions, and a web of hidden truths unfold before us. But you were saying to him, listen, I'm pregnant with your child, but I really want to go pursue a relationship somewhere else? I was else. not pregnant yet. Okay. That's the thing. I became pregnant the week after I told him that. I have to ask you, is there any chance that the other man... Me and this person was communicating over Facebook and on the phone. Me and this person has had no physical contact. But you just said right. you and him was going to live together. Angela confesses her initial plan to leave Jerome, but life takes an unexpected turn with Ayana's arrival. The courtroom buzzes with anticipation as the judge addresses the burning question of paternity, ordering DNA tests to unveil the truth. Brace yourselves. The results are about to be revealed. Oldest child was born. So listen, listen, we can see now that this was not a committed relationship, and we know now, Ms. Monroe, this is not something you were fully informed about before your son's unfortunate passing. I need to know now, what are your hopes? I just really want to know if Iyana's my granddaughter. And if she is, are you hoping for a grandmother, granddaughter relationship? Do you want to be in her life? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know if we can go there. The courtroom transforms into a haven of raw emotions as Angela, a terminally ill mother, finally embraces the truth about her son's second child. A wave of closure washes over her, bringing with it a mix of sorrow and relief. Despite earlier tensions and arguments, the judge, in a moment of solemnity, stresses the importance of setting aside personal conflicts for the sake of the innocent. Angela, with a heavy heart, extends her heartfelt wishes, expressing hope that Ayana will have the chance to know her grandmother. The court adjourns, leaving us with puffy eyes and drenched tissues. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Angela Monroe and Iana Monroe is 99.98%. I know you needed it. Uh, yes. And you have been through a lot. What every mother, every mother's worst nightmare. We've got Miss Bailey and her daughter, Miss Parker, suing Mr. Parker for a whopping $3,691.50 in childcare expenses. 
But get this, Mr. Parker is Miss Parker's estranged husband, and he's denying he's the father of her four-month-old son, Zachariah. He hasn't given a single penny for the baby's expenses. It's about to get hot in here. Miss Bailey, you and your daughter are suing the defendant for $3,691.50 in child care expenses. Mr. Parker is your daughter's estranged husband, and he denies paternity of your four-month-old grandson. You claim he hasn't even given your daughter a single penny. Now, Mr. Parker's defense is basically, go find the real dad and sue him instead. But wait, there's more. He's demanding a paternity test because he's convinced he's not the biological father. Did he write all of this down on a napkin during breakfast? Because wow, we've seen better defenses on school playgrounds. Is to take their lawsuit, find the real father of the child and sue him. Yes, Your Honor. You're seeking the results of a paternity test because you say you do not believe you are four-month-old Zechariah's biological father. Ms. Bailey, tell me about your lawsuit. Well, Your Honor, I've come here today because Mr. Parker has done nothing, not a single thing for my daughter or my grandson. He left her when she was 16 weeks pregnant. Ms. Bailey is fed up because Mr. Parker ghosted her daughter when she was 16 weeks pregnant. He just up and left, folks. And Ms. Bailey, she's been playing super grandma, taking care of the baby, buying formula, diapers, you name it, while her daughter is working on her second college degree. Talk about a super mom and super grandma duo. To hold the baby when he cries and comfort him. Not him. He's living the way he wants to. And I, my daughter is going to college. She's working on her second degree. Not her first, but her second degree. What type of relationship has he established with Zechariah this far? Nothing. Zero. Zero. He doesn't even know what he looks like. He's never laid eyes on him. You don't even know what he looks like, Mr. Parker? But Mr. Parker? He claims he was practically kicked out of the house, told he wasn't worth anything, and couldn't even eat with the family. And the kicker? He says Miss Parker started wearing makeup to pay bills and meet neighbors. I mean, makeup, people. Honestly, does Mr. Parker even know what century he's in? So they would have enough to eat. Bottom line is, you two were in some type of relationship. We were married, we were married. Your Honor. Married. We still are. Yes, we are married. Yes. What led to this entire situation anyway, whether you left or you got ran out? First it started, she'd start wearing makeup and everything. She was wearing it to church. That was, it ain't so funny. She never wore makeup before. She and started wearing don't. it just to go to pay the bills, run out to go over, just to go see the neighbor. The drama doesn't stop there. Mr. Parker comes home one day to find a padlock on the bedroom door. But Miss Parker's got a reason. She says it's because she was hiding Christmas presents for her eight-year-old who still believes in Santa. Mr. Parker thinks there might be dirty photos or something fishy going on. The suspense is insane. I'm not going to let him go in there and see what he's getting for Christmas because he still believes in Santa. Then why did I, when I asked you so but I could go in there and go in the You didn't have bedroom, anything left in there. Because you threw everything out. Did you lock your husband out too? I locked that bedroom door because I didn't trust him and didn't want him in that room. He didn't have anything in there. I didn't see a point in him going in there. What did you think was going on in this bedroom, Mr. Parker? And here's the reason. Real kicker, folks. Mr. Parker wasn't even told about the baby's birth until a week later. He wasn't at the birth. He's never seen the baby, and he's been paying for a lawyer for a DNA test. He's cut all communication, wanting to handle things legally. But wait, there's a witness. Mr. Parker's mom, Miss Perez, steps up to the plate and throws some shade. She claims Miss Parker would dump Mr. Parker at his mom's house and only call him back on payday. And she hopes the baby isn't her son's because she doesn't want him tied to Miss Parker for 18 years. Ouch! Message on her answering machine. <laughs> because she hadn't told us anything. Did you accompany her to doctor's appointments? No, you you're actually involved. I was not involved? allowed to, ma'am. I was told I was too annoying and I needed to stay home. At this point, I didn't know if it was she was taking another man or who, family or who. Miss Parker, did you tell your husband he was annoying and needed to stay home and you didn't want him to go to your doctor's appointment? I told him that I didn't need somebody holding my hand at a doctor's appointment. And ma'am, I'd like to enter into evidence the birth certificate it has on it that. Please let me see that birth certificate. Now, Miss Parker's got received seats, literally. She hands over a list of expenses for baby Zachariah, totaling $3,691.50. But Mr. Parker is sticking to his story, saying he's not the daddy. The tension in the courtroom was thick, and just when you think it can't get any crazier, the judge asks for the birth certificate. And what do we see? Refused! Refused! The baby's dad is a mystery man. Born within your marriage. And yes, yet, Your Honor. as I review your evidence... And this shows that I was not even on the certificate, and this is a federal document that was not shown that shows that she lied to the doctors, lied to the hospital, and lied to me. She didn't lie to them. She I... 
I didn't lie. They, the hospital, didn't put him on the birth certificate because of the marital problems, because of what I had experienced. So he wasn't allowed at the hospital. Let me be clear. Fast forward to the big moment, and the judge was ready to reveal if Mr. Parker was the father or not. You could hear a pin drop in the courtroom. Everyone was on the edge of their seats. The DNA test results were in, and it was time for this dysfunctional couple to know the truth. Mr. Parker, you are his father. I told you. Told you. Told you. It was difficult to watch a husband and a wife go at it like that. And then just when I thought there was very little hope this could work. Buckle up, because today we're diving into a paternity court case that's got more twists than a pretzel factory. We're talking about a 22-year-old paternity mystery. And guys, this one's a tearjerker. Or today because you say she hid the identity of your father from you for 14 years. Now today, there's a man waiting outside of the courtroom that your mother believes could be your biological father yet you still have no idea if that's... Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Hall, you admit you let your daughter believe that the man who raised her was her father, knowing that it was a lie. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Curtis has been living a lie for 14 whole years. She thought one man was her daddy, but nope. Her mom, Miss Hall, had been keeping the real tea on the DL. And guess what? There's a dude outside the courtroom who might be her real pops. Talk about a daytime drama. My grandmother, she sat me down and she said that she wanted to tell me the truth about who my father really is to be and that my mother has been lying to me for the past years of my life, which was time was 14 years old and that the man at the time was not my father. She said to me, I want you to take it to your grave if your mother never owns up and tell you yourself. And I said, okay. And I felt that it was the truth because I always felt like I was adopted. Miss Curtis tells the court how her grandma dropped the bomb on her, revealing that her whole life was basically an episode of who's your daddy? She always felt like something was off, like maybe she was adopted because her dad was colder than the Arctic. That it was the truth because I always felt like I was adopted. My father, he really never really showed me the affection, the love at all. Actually, Your Honor, yes, I did not tell my daughter at a young age about who her father was. Simply one, because I was a young girl, I was pregnant at the age of 15. I gave birth to her when I was 16 years old. When I was 15, I met Kirk and Kirk lived a pretty much like a fast lifestyle. Now, Miss Hall has a story that's wilder than a roller coaster. She got pregnant super young at 15 and was messing around with a guy named Kirk who lived life in the fast lane. But when she got knocked up, she wasn't sure who the father was. Drama! Fast forward a bit and Miss Hall has her daughter believing another guy is her father. But then she switches up the story faster than a DJ at a club, throwing yet another name into the mix. Miss Curtis had no idea what was going on. And Kurt lived pretty much like a fast lifestyle. Okay. And you know, which attracted me to him. And being young, at the time when I got pregnant, I didn't know, I didn't even know that I was pregnant because I didn't know anything about the body. You didn't know the, what it meant. You were just so young. Yes. And then what happened? Um, about a month passed by and I, I would say I started uh, my cycle and I was like, oh, wow. You know, I was shocked. Okay, well, maybe I'm not. I'm not. Finally, her mom comes clean and says, actually, your dad's name is Kirk and Miss Curtis is vindicated. The courtroom was shook when Miss Curtis revealed she'd been pen pals with Kirk while he was in prison. She's trying to bond with the man who might be her father and those letters are packed with emotions. Kirk was out there making promises like a politician during an election, saying he'd be the father she always needed. She already told me. She told me another name. She didn't tell me Kirk's name. She gave me another name. So I said, oh, I'm just so happy. I'm going to call Nana and I'm going to tell her that such and such is my dad. And then she goes, oh, no, no, no. I need to tell you the truth. I said, well, what is the truth? I thought you said such and such is my dad. She goes, no, really? Your dad's name is Kirk. Plot twist. Miss Hall wrote a letter to Kirk, but never sent it. Then someone else in the family found it and mailed it off. It's like a mystery novel up in here. The judge was serving up the truth like a hot plate at a buffet, trying to get to the bottom of this paternity pickle. And Kirk? He's in the courtroom now, talking about how he wasn't sure if Miss Curtis was his because Miss Hall had other guys on the line. When Tamika initially told me, hey, uh, I'm pregnant, uh, you're the father. But as I remember, she was also in a relationship with someone else. That was actually convenient for me being that I was with somebody. So I, I mean, I'll take my part, hey. Miss Curtis is feeling all the feels, saying her mom and Kirk are like professional liars. She's been tossed around in a sea of lies and she's just trying to find a life raft of truth. So here we are, hearts racing, palms sweaty, waiting for the big reveal. Will Kirk step up to the plate? Is he the father? Or is this just another episode in the never ending saga of Miss Curtis's life? Mr. Whitaker, you are her father. 
How you feel, Miss Curtis? I feel really good. <laughs> I'm really happy <laughs> to have my dad. You are? I'm overwhelmed, yeah. I'm happy for her. And I, I just want to see the best. I just want the best for her, and I want her to. Well, you know what I think is wonderful about the truth? That the truth, I always say, is the most important foundation we can all stand on. All right, so picture this. Miss McKenzie is accusing Mr. Guy of bailing on her and their daughter, Ania, right after she was born. And get this, she claims he's denying paternity because he's already got a football team worth of kids, plus the bench. We're talking 13 kids, folks. Mackenzie, you say Mr. Guy abandoned you and your daughter, Anaya, soon after she was born and denies he's her father only because he already has too many kids. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Guy, you say you knew this wasn't your child from the moment Miss McKenzie said she was pregnant. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Miss McKenzie, when did you first realize that he denied he was your daughter's father? Well, when I told him that I was pregnant, he kind of like was shocked a little bit. Then he was like, she gonna be my 13th daughter, like. But wait, Mr. Guy only mentioned eight kids. And then plot twist, he suddenly jumps to 13 when she tells him she's pregnant. Talk about a numbers game. The audience was buzzing when Miss McKenzie dropped the bomb that she went to college with one of Mr. Guy's kids. And get this, Mr. Guy is 45 and Miss McKenzie is 28. The crowd lost it. Yes, we was in college together with one of his kids. And then like when I wait, asked him how old that, are you? I'm 28. And how old are you, Mr. Guy? 45. Oh, boy. Okay, so when did you realize he was denying your child? That he said, this this, this is not my child? Well, after I had her, he was at the hospital and everything. When he brought us home, he just, like, basically set her on the floor in her car seat. He was like, I gotta go run an errand. And he never came back, so... Oh. Was, he just left her there. Like, he just left us there for, like, months. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Miss McKenzie says that after she brought baby Ania home from the hospital, Mr. Guy just ditched them. He said he had an errand, but the dude went MIA for months. Can you believe that? Fast forward, and Mr. Guy is claiming he's been avoiding her calls because she was, and I quote, harassing him. But come on, man, she's just trying to get you to be a dad. And you had to trick him. You had to call him from your friend's phone and so he, he wouldn't recognize the number yes. for him to answer because he had not been answering your call. Yes. Mr. Guy, have you been avoiding her calls all that time? Yes, Your Honor. Why? She, she was harassing me. Harassing you about what? Baby this, baby that. Because she's I'm your like, baby. That ain't my baby, you know. Okay. It's Milkman's baby, somebody's Milkman. baby, but it wasn't mine. Excuse me. Why did you say it wasn't yours? Were you sleeping with her? And Mr. Guy has the audacity to say that the baby doesn't deserve anything from him. But wait, put down the pitchforks, folks. Let's get to the bottom of this first. According to him, he saw Miss McKenzie with some other guy in a car. But Ms. McKenzie claimed that the guy in question was just a friend giving her a ride. Hmm, this is getting interesting. She was sitting in a car with somebody, and they was there for a while because we were sitting up there watching them. So... What were they doing in the car? I thought they was having sex. Really? It can I say something? That night that he's talking about, I called him and he told me to come over to his house. When I got there, he was not there. So when I was leaving, my friend that lives down the street from him saw me and gave me a ride. We were parked by my house, in front of our house, talking. Were you else? sleeping with anybody else while no. you were having... What, kind, what is this relationship? Are you all boyfriend and girlfriend no. or what? Now, here's where the plot thickens. Mr. Guy starts playing detective, saying he caught Miss McKenzie coming home at midnight when her classes ended at 4.55 p.m. He even brought a schedule to court as Exhibit A. But Miss McKenzie had an alibi. She was working a night job cleaning offices. 45. Went to pick my son up and came back home and did my homework, and I did that every day. As far as him saying I got home at midnight, when I was going to school, I was also working third shift, cleaning uh, college offices downtown. I don't remember that job. Because you weren't there. You I even told me job. his friend. His friend even worked there with me. His friend worked there with me. He makes up stories because he he has to counter he has to make me look bad for the fact that. So what he you're saying is that. is you you were not sleeping with anyone else. No. I There's was not. no other possibility. No. Mr. Guy? I think it's a lot of possibilities. But wait, there's more! Mr. Guy talks about this mystery man on the couch at Miss McKenzie's place, and she's like, who? I don't know this man! It's like a soap opera, folks! Then Miss McKenzie's mom steps up and she's fuming. She's calling out Mr. Guy for clubbing and vanishing for days while denying her granddaughter. And let's be real, the guy's got a track record of Houdini acts. He goes to the club, he might not even come in for two or three days. Two or three days? Yes. What, what's with all these disappearing acts, Mr. Guy? He must I was be stressed. A magician. You were stressed. Yeah, she stressed me. How, he says I stress him because I feel like if we're adults and we live together, we're trying to build a family. You should be doing your part as much as I'm doing my part. If we're a unit, we're a unit. 
and if he's slacking, I feel like I should have to build him up if he's slacking. I'm going to tell you, get it together. If I'm stressing you, it's because I want to help our family. If so Judge Lake is trying to make sense of Mr. Guy's story. And let's just say it's not looking too good for him. He's on the birth certificate, but he's all like, that's not my signature. Yeah, right, buddy. Miss McKenzie is heartbroken, saying she just wanted a family. And Mr. Guy hasn't even seen Ania in two years. That's right, two years. You never executed anything. No. Just somehow your name got up on that birth certificate. He held my hand through birth. I'm just he seeing said where he the was the only person at. there. I don't, I don't, he was I the only person there when I had my daughter. He held my hand during birth. And then just dropped you off at the house. Like like we was nothing. Like we was nothing. Why did you even come to the hospital? Why, if, if, she, if it wasn't your child, why even show? Because he was at my house. Because he was living there. He was at my house when I went into labor. I went into labor at home. The tension is through the roof as Judge Lake receives the DNA results. Everyone's on the edge of their seats. Will Mr. Guy step up or will he keep running from responsibility? Let's find out. Are her father. <laughs> now what, Mr. Guy? Speak. I feel pretty much ashamed. I would like to be a father to her. When's the last time you saw her? Maybe two years ago. Two years ago? Let me tell you something. Get yourself together. Ms. Lindsay is sure of one thing and one thing only, that Mr. Darren Brink here is her father. She knows it. She says everyone in town knows it, and she just wants the DNA test results to prove it. Mr. Darren Brink, on the other hand, says that he might have slept with Miss Lindsay's mother at one point, but he says that doesn't mean anything because he's 100% certain he could never be Miss Lindsay's father. Right, Your Honor, I met her, and uh, we just had like a hit and run situation. Uh, she disappeared on me, and then we got back together again, and a couple days later, she went, went her way, and it just kept on for years that way, and there's no way she could be my daughter, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lindsay, wh what do you mean everyone in town knows that he's your father? Okay, I'm trying to get you, Mr. Darren Brink, but if you admit that you slept with Miss Lindsay's mother at least once around the period she was conceived, then it's actually scientifically possible for her to be your daughter. It doesn't matter whether the situation was a hit and run one. What matters is that you hit. Miss Lindsay also has her reasons for believing Mr. Darren Brink is her father. You were 16. Yes. And an ex of Mr. Darren Brink's comes to your house. Yes. And says, you're the child that your mother had with Mr. Dannenbrink. Yes, Your Honor. In other words, the ex thinks you're the child that came in between yes. her and Mr. Dannenbrink. Yes, Your Honor. When she said this to you, uh -huh. what did you say? <laughs> well, at first I was like, what? You're wrong. There's no way. And um, I came to my mother and I talked to her about it and she told me no, that he was not my father. When Ms. Lindsay heard this, she went to her mother and was told that Mr. Dannenbrink wasn't her father and that her father was another man entirely. Unfortunately, Miss Lindsay had never actually met that man. Even to this day, she hasn't met him. Mr. Dannenbrink. Yes, Your Honor. When she said this to you, uh -huh. what did you say? <laughs> well, at first I was like, what? You're wrong. There's no way. And um, I came to my mother and I talked to her about it. And she told me, no, that he was not my father. That um, another man that she had told me was my dad was my dad. She said, this other man is your father, but you'd never met that man. No, I still haven't. So I don't know who that is. Okay. So basically, Mr. Darren Brink is now Ms. Lindsay's next door neighbor and potential father. Incredibly, Ms. Lindsay never really broached this topic with him until today. Neela Thompson, Ms. Lindsay's mother, is also in court today, and she has a fair bit to say, too. We dated off and on, and I was involved with somebody else, and he was involved with somebody else. Five years ago, we met back up and started having conversation and uh, platonic relationship. We're best of friends. So, Mr. Dan and Brink, did you know about the pregnancy? I did not, Your Honor. She never told me that she was pregnant. She never told me I even had a child. You didn't Your tell Honor. him you... you Mr. Darren Brink never actually knew that Ms. Thompson got pregnant. All of this is news to him. Ms. Thompson says she had no reason to tell him because she's sure he isn't the father. So Mr. Darren Brink is sure he isn't the father. Ms. Thompson is sure he is not the father. But somehow Ms. Lindsay, the only person who wasn't there, is sure Mr. Darren Brink is her father. Why? Thank you. You're welcome. What does this calendar this outline? Cal this calendar shows, um, for one, the day that I was born. And if you count back, um, if I was born full term, the conception would be between May and June. And um, the doctors did say that I was born um, a month premature, which puts my due date at March 11th, which my mother would be right at that time. However, I had no health problems when I was born. I was born at a normal weight. The point Miss Lindsay seems to be making is that her mother and Mr. Darren Brink were sleeping together at the time she was conceived. But does Mr. Darren Brink even remember this? Premature. Mr. Dan 
Shannon Brink? Yes, Your Honor. Do you agree with the date set forth on this calendar? I really can't, couldn't tell you because back then it was hectic. I mean, it I was, had so much going on. That it was hectic? I, yes. It was back in the 70s, so I'm sure you, you understand what... No, I was just a kid <laughs> then, so... I did a lot of uh, drugs back then, so I really couldn't tell you. There you have it, folks. Mr. Darren Brink is so sure he isn't Miss Lindsay's father, but he actually cannot tell because he had so many sexual relationships with so many people. How long did your sexual relationship with Miss Hampton last? Uh, we got together, we were together for maybe a couple of weeks and then she disappeared. And then we meet again a few years later. So it was like that. So you all just were kind of uh, sex part. Yes. Just Correct, Your Honor. Whatever. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. For some reason, Miss Thompson seems very pleased about this. What's so amusing? Ms. Thompson. Are you reminiscing about those times? Let's move on. Ms. Lindsay has a bunch of other reasons why she doesn't believe her mother when it comes to this issue. To not believe your mother. The doctors did say that I was born a month early, but they also said that I was going to be a boy the entire time she was pregnant with me. So they could have been wrong. Um, second thing, my mom does admit to having a child with Mr. Danabry. Um, throughout my life, though, the dates have kind of changed a little bit. Um, I remember at one time it was that she was an older sister. Then I remember at another time she was a younger sister than me, and um, she was... This is true. Ms. Thompson confesses on the stand that she had a stillborn that was certainly Mr. Darenbrink's child. And guess what? Mr. Darenbrink never heard about that either. But Ms. Lindsay doesn't believe her mother's testimony because she says evidence of this child's existence does not exist. Ms. Lindsay is certain her mother is lying because this wouldn't be her first time. Because it's not the first time. <laughs> uh, she didn't technically lie about another brother, but she didn't tell me about another brother. Um, she got pregnant and gave um, him up for adoption. It went through social media that he found me. And I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? You're not my brother. And I called my mom at that time. And I said, um, I have another brother. And she's like, oh. Yeah, what? Ms. Thompson, what's up with that? So we have Ms. Thompson who's shown a pattern of lies. Mr. Darenbrink who cannot remember who he slept with and when he slept with them. And Ms. Lindsay who's certain that Mr. Darenbrink is her father. Let's see what the DNA test has to say about this case. Mr. Darenbrink, you are not her father. Sorry. It doesn't matter, she's still, I consider her my daughter. Ms. Allen is in court today with her daughter, Ms. Baylor. She says after a brief fling with Mr. Childs, she discovered that she was pregnant with his baby. Ms. Allen says in the beginning, Mr. Childs was happy to claim Ms. Baylor, but his wife convinced him that the child wasn't his. Mr. Childs and his wife believe that Ms. Allen was involved with several other people at the time of Ms. Baylor's conception. Ms. Allen is now looking to get the results of the DNA test and prove that Ms. Baylor is Mr. Childs' daughter. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Ms. Allen, why is Mr. Childs denying your daughter? Um, his, his petty wife. Um, She's been doing me, that for years. She wasn't there when we were sleeping together or nothing. So I don't think she have anything to do with it. So you're basically blaming his wife? Yes. She, she should blame herself, Your Honor. What? Why did it take you 20 years to figure out that you should get a DNA you, test Because for? I didn't when need, I I you, didn't need to go through, through the, the drama. Beginning. Again, I didn't need I to go through the drama. All right. With Mr. Child says that's good and great, but Ms. Allen should actually blame herself for not figuring out she needed to find her child's father for the past 20 years. Okay, maybe that's a fair point, but it shows the extent of the bad blood between these two. Let's get one thing straight. Ms. Allen and Mr. Childs don't like each other at all. Let's talk one at a time, because I do want to understand this. How did you all even get together? She was friends with cousins of mine, and we got together like that. We ended up messing around or whatever. Nothing serious. So you People... all get together, yeah. you have mutual <laughs> friends, you start having sex. Well, obviously actually, unprotected. Actually it started like this. We had a friend that got killed. And me and him, you know, we were, you know, I would call and check on him and things like that. Then one day, I just came through after a football game, and, and he wanted to ride with me. And so we went on and had drinks or whatever. Okay, great story. Ms. Allen says that Mr. Child and she made Ms. Baylor that night. And that's the reason she's here. That wasn't the only time they were intimate either. Ms. Allen says they got together a few times after that and that was it. I told him, I said, she may be your child. You told him directly? Yes. I told him, I said, it's a possibility that she may so not be So you said it is a possibility it, that she may not be yours. Exactly. So you acknowledge this doubt? Y yeah. yeah and, and okay, I, so I, Mr. Child? Yes, ma'am. How did the story go 
in your assessment. Mr. Child says the relationship was never serious. And sometimes you get tired of hearing this on paternity court. The supposed fathers always say the relationship was never serious like that even matters. Okay, what if it was not serious? A child could still have come from it. Oh, hey, listen, I'm trying to get at you or anything like that. No, never that. It's just a moment that happened. So I even asked her, you know, once I found out I heard she was pregnant, hey, are you pre You supposed to be pregnant by me? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's yours or not. So I'm like, okay, I'll tell you what. If the, if you're pregnant and it's mine, let's get a DNA test. We can go ahead and get this out of the way. Have no problem with taking care of her because she would have been my first. I don't see her again for months. So Mr. Childs was ready to step up, but unfortunately didn't see any plate to step up to. It gets worse. When Ms. Baylor was born, Ms. Allen didn't invite Mr. Childs to the hospital. She says she informed the other possible fathers that they may also be Ms. Baylor's dad, but she didn't invite any of them to the hospital either. But that's beside the point. 20 years ago, Ms. Allen didn't know for sure if Mr. Childs was her kid's father. Today, she knows for sure. What changed? The because father. I was messing with him first. How do you know From that? the, what you mean, how do I know that? You, I had to go through the drama with Miss Johnson. Um, up and down the road, she followed me. I guess she remember me chasing her up and down the street, but she can't remember who fathered her child. Why am I living, why am I living in her head rent free, but she can't remember who fathered her child. Furthermore, your honor, he's always girl, been there for girl, my please. children. So this, this girl, little please. song and dance like she lying. doing, I'm telling the truth. Why you would, like she, she, she yeah, okay, I think it's important to know too. Whatever, when we met her, her daughter. Well, great question, Miss Johnson. All of this just goes to show that there are significant doubts in Miss Allen's mind about who the real father of her child is. But somehow she's in court today, claiming that she knows who is and that he's Mr. Childs. This Mr. Childs is taking none of that. Anyway, did Miss Allen really test another man? Okay, that is true. Tell the court about that. That is true, but that was somebody that I wasn't even messing with him. This was something that Why you testing came Why would you test someone it? you aren't messing with? Because this is, he, this, you know, she he, was fishing. He for came food. out, he came out and asked me, and he said, you know, I was messing with your mom around the time I wanted I wanted to get a DNA test with you. Okay, someone reached out to you, yes. Ms. Baylor, and said, I think I may be your father and I want to have a test. The bottom line is Ms. Allen hasn't had a DNA test with any of the other men she was with at the time Ms. Baylor was conceived. And she's somehow certain that of all of those men, Mr. Childs has got to be the one. Let's see what the DNA test has to say about this. Mr. Childs, you are not the father. It's okay, Your Honor. You know, at the same time. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Mr. Hunter is completely certain that he isn't Josiah's father. Ms. Holden, Josiah's mother, says this is a lie and that Mr. Hunter is indeed the father of Josiah. She says she was earlier confused about the paternity of Josiah because she was given incorrect medical information but now she's beyond certain that Josiah belongs to Mr. Hunter. Mr. Hunter, on the other hand, just thinks Ms. Holden wants him to be the father so that she can have access to his money. You worry? She's only saying you did because of the financial security you provide for her. Is that correct? Yes, Sean. All right, Ms. Holden, you admit you were confused about your son's biological father because you were given incorrect medical information, but you are 100% certain Mr. Hunter is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hunter, you say this is about financial security? Yes. Tell the court why you feel that way, sir. Not only has Mr. Hunter stepped up as a father to Josiah, but he's also gotten emotionally attached to the boy as well. Ms. Holden says her relationship with Mr. Hunter started off platonically, but at some point they decided to have intercourse. Yes, yes. So were you having sex with protection? No. Yes. We're, here we go. You all haven't agreed on one thing yet. Who said yes? She said no. I said yes, we were using protection. No, we wasn't. Okay. That's what we call reasonable doubt in a criminal court. <laughs> reasonable doubt. So now listen, you're having sex. One says you're using protection, one says you're not. Exactly, Judge Lake. Mr. Hunter says they weren't even dating at this point because Ms. Holden was sleeping with another of her friends. And was she using protection with that friend? Were you using protection with that friend? No, Your Honor. All right, so when you find out you're pregnant, you got one friend that you dating that Mr. Hunter is aware of, and now you've also made this friend, Mr. Hunter, into a sexual partner. When you get pregnant, who do you tell? Mr. Hunter. You do? Yes. What happened? Um... Well, if she isn't using protection with that friend, how does she know that Josiah belongs to Mr. Hunter and not the other friend? 
Short answer, she doesn't know. Anyway, when Ms. Holden realized she was pregnant, she first told Mr. Hunter about it. At that point, Mr. Hunter assumed that the child was his, but then she told him that there could be another father. I was, I was, I was feeling like, okay, I could be as if like, okay, now you're sleeping with, who knows who you're sleeping with? I've been through other situations in my past to where like now it's like it's a role playing in my head again. Here we go again, something, you know, the same situation. And it's, you know, when she said she could, it kind of like, it made me feel some type of way. Because you've been through a paternity situation before. Do you know what could make this case worse? What could make Mr. Hunter start completely doubting that this child belongs to him, naming the child after another man? Thankfully, Ms. Holden is a very reasonable person and didn't do anything as crazy as that. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, because I named my son after someone else. What? So, Ms. Holden, did you know Mr. Hunter had doubts all this time? Yes. You did? Yes. Did you invite him to the hospital for the birth? No, ma'am. You didn't? No, ma'am. This is confusing. Now, you're paying for everything, but you don't want to get attached because of your previous paternity situation. Right. But you're accepting his support, right, Ms. Holden? Right? It's really hard to think of a case more confusing than this one. To make things even more confusing, Mr. Hunter dropped Ms. Holden off at the hospital when she gave birth. He just didn't enter to witness the birth of a baby that could be his. Maybe that's why Ms. Holden named the child after another man anyway. It's rare to see men in paternity court who have the best reasons not to think a child belongs to them. But Mr. Hunter here? I don't think any of us can judge him for thinking that Josiah belongs to another man. However, Ms. Holden has some pretty sensible reasons for doing all that. November the 15th, this is when I slept with Mr. Hunter. I went to the doctor. My first due date they gave me was August 2nd. Okay. And then I went back to the doctor and they gave me August 9th, and I slept with the other man on the 18th of November. So that's just three days apart. <clears throat> three days apart, yes ma'am. So when you had the original due date, it for you, you believe, counted back. Yes, that Mr. Hunter was the father. And then she got another date from the doctor that made her believe that the other man, who we can safely assume is James Josiah, was the father as well. But then Josiah was born three weeks early, which makes her believe that Mr. Hunter is the father. This is such a complex puzzle that can only be unraveled by the DNA test. So let's see what it says. Mr. Hunter, you are not the father. So very sorry. Sorry. Mr. Hunter, I can see that hurt, and that's not the news I wanted to deliver today. I must still be in his life. Ms. Allen thinks that Mr. Levant is denying her six-month-old Layla only because he wants to keep their affair a secret. Mr. Levant says this is a lie, and he and his girlfriend, Ms. Lanier, are in court today to prove Ms. Allen wrong. About the situation today. He is, he's denying our child, and he needs to step up to be a man. Why do you think he's denying the baby? Because his girlfriend, of course, his girlfriend, telling him lies. The girlfriend tells him lies? Yes, Your Honor. Like what? No, I don't. Telling him that the baby don't look like him. That baby too light. My baby do not too light. Oh. Just because I have to light dark. And he don't want to break up his happy home with his girlfriend. Mr. Levant has been with his girlfriend for a while, and they have three children together. He also doesn't deny having intercourse with Miss Allen. He just says he split up with his girlfriend for one night after an argument, and that night he found himself in Miss Allen's bed. It like, was it, not just, one night. We split up. Like, we was going through some stuff. No, it wasn't. And yes, it we was. Had, we had no, a break for a minute. Yes, it was no, it a one wasn't. night stand. No, it wasn't. Yes, so, it was. You just married because I got my baby, so be quiet. You wasn't here. So, you, wait a minute. You, you tried to break there, up a happy you home because there, you knew we had three kids like together said, for the okay, longest. Whatever. You have been commenting on my Facebook profile for No, I was there because I was telling you to keep him away from me. No. Okay, so it's clear there's no love lost between these two. It's also clear that Ms. Lanier may be the one telling Mr. Levant not to accept Ms. Allen's baby. Ms. Allen, I need to know, did you know Mr. Levant had a girlfriend and three children no, when you were sleeping Honor. with him? No. Yes, you did. Was no, it just a one-night stand? No, it wasn't. You commented on we my We were together, child. like I said, we were together 2010. Y'all never I met together. Him. No, yes, we were. Oh, with a phone? Okay, first, first oh, off, phone, okay, child. but I wasn't talking really? to you. Okay. So wait a minute, I want to understand the nature of this relationship, Miss Allen. It was Allen. a long-distance relationship. They only talked it, it was, over the it phone, It was a long-distance relationship. So it was a long-distance relationship. You lived in one state, he lived in another? Yes. Miss Allen insists that she was in a long-distance relationship with Mr. Levant for five years. You heard that right, five 
whole years. Mr. Levant admits that he spoke with Miss Allen for a whole year on the phone, and Miss Lanier says she was aware but told Mr. Levant to stop contacting her. You know what? What all of this tells me is that Mr. Levant's contract wasn't a one-night stand. It was a several-year stand, if there's anything like that. So, on this calendar, you claim you were intimate with Mr. Levant on the 27th of December. Yes. Your due date was uh, September 26th. Was he September 26th. So, Mr. Levant, do you agree with what this calendar asserts? Not at all. You don't believe that? <laughs> not at all. Why not? Uh, the dates is wrong. You uh, okay. text me a letter, a doctor's letter, saying that you was pregnant on the 6th. On the 6th of January? Yes. No, it wasn't. Did you bring that letter? No. That seems like solid evidence to me. If what Miss Allen is saying is correct and she didn't sleep with any other person in that period, then Mr. Levant has to be the father of her child. But we know things aren't always that straightforward in paternity court, don't we? Do you agree with what this calendar asserts? Not at all. <laughs> you don't believe that? Not at all. Why not? Uh, the dates is wrong. You uh, okay. text me a letter, a doctor's letter, saying that you was pregnant on the 6th. On the 6th of January? Yes. No, it wasn't. Did you bring that letter? No. So, okay, that doesn't negate the fact that you all may have had sex on the 27th of December. I... Ms. Lanier says that Ms. Allen was having sex with other men at the time, that she slept with Mr. Levant, and she's just doing all of this to break up her home. Uh, the I men, and Mr. Him. Mitchell was, was her current boyfriend. She broke up with her boyfriend just to no, break up my no, happy home with no, Mr. Levant. You don't know, so you wasn't there. You are saying that Ms. Allen was intimate with another man somewhere during this timeline. Yes. Can you tell the court where? In the park. It was not at the park. I mean, at what time? <laughs> it was not at the park. You slept with Mr. Right. Mitchell in the park. Like I said, it was not at the park. Now, things are getting interesting. And guess what? Mr. Mitchell is also in court today. I'm sure he'll have some very interesting things to say about all of this. Before we get to that, things are getting hot for Mr. Levant as his girlfriend says she will break up with him if the child is proven to be his. Mr. Levant then says he's never accepted Layla as his daughter. However, Ms. Allen has text messages that prove just how much Mr. Levant loves her daughter Layla. Happy Valentine's Day, Lily. Layla. Layla. Daddy loves you. Happy wow. Valentine's Day to you, Carlisha. Then you send a picture of Layla. Layla. Daughter. And then he says, Mr. Levant says, what's she doing? And then you say, looking around. And then he says, she looking for me, laugh out loud. And then you say, laugh out loud, nah, her sis. And then you respond, Mr. Levant, and I want my daughter. Well, Mr. Levant, five minutes ago you said you'd never accepted Layla as your daughter, and now text messages are proving that was nothing but a lie. Hey, Mr. Levant, blink three times if you need help. Those text messages are fake. That I don't was know, not I don't fake. know. That's not me. It was. It wasn't, Your Honor. How the heck do I send That's a picture me. to myself and text myself? That's his number. So you believe she fabricated all of this? Yes. Okay, so what is the motive here? Now, Ms. Lanier, you say she's trying to break you all up, she's been stalking you, and I mean this with all due respect. But what could be the motive here? Why would Ms. Allen fabricate all these messages? Why would she want to destroy Mr. Levant's life like his girlfriend claims? What could she possibly gain from it? Could she be so obsessed over you, Mr. Levant? Exactly. I, I mean it respectfully. I really don't mean it in that way. I, I really want to know what, what, what? If you're just talking to her on the phone and nothing was really happening and you weren't having sex with her, you weren't leading her on except a one night stand. How does, I mean, this is like a movie or something. I mean, one night stand leads to her wanting to destroy your entire family? Correct. Why? Because she know I'm a good man and I take <laughs> care of my kids. Really? That's what you're going with? Anyway, let's hear from Mr. Mitchell, Ms. Allen's ex-boyfriend who Ms. Lanier claims could also be the father of Layla. Her mother, Ms. Allen? Yes, ma'am. You did. Did she ever tell you that you could be Layla's father? No, ma'am. She didn't? No, ma'am. And so, do you believe you are Layla's father? No, ma'am. Mr. Levant, after you heard Mr. Mitchell's testimony, does that change in any way how you feel about Ms. Allen's assertions? No. It doesn't? No. I mean, he's a man of few words, but he was pretty direct. All right, then. We've heard from everyone worth hearing from. It's now time to hear from the final authority on the matter, the DNA test. When it comes to six-month-old Layla Allen, it has been determined by this court Mr. Levant, you are not the father. Ooh. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. Miss hmm. Allen. He's the only man I saw you know. Looking at this couple, you could tell they just weren't meant for each other. 
Mrs. Johnson dragged Mr. Johnson to court on the matter of him not being a good dad. Was Mr. Johnson having any of it? Hell no! Let's get this parenting drama on the road, shall we? Mr. and Mrs. Johnson have been at each other's throats for quite some time now. Having been married for up to seven years, their marriage has crash landed from a state of bad to worse. And the shocking thing here, it's all because of their 12 year old kid. Trust me, it's crazy. Now, Mr. Johnson, you admit that your marriage is at its breaking point, but you argue that it's because your wife undermines your authority and allows her 12 year old son to disrespect you. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Johnson went on and on about how Mr. Johnson wasn't threatening both of their kids. In her words, he had a favorite one. He shows blatant favoritism. He, I'm angry. I just want my kids to feel equal. I want my That's oldest son to feel When you say he shows love. favoritism. You can bet Mr. Johnson wasn't just going to let her run her mouth. He comes in like a blazing inferno, telling her she's to be blamed. It's like a war zone in the courtroom. For an example, I put my kids in baseball. He would participate in our son Ethan's, and he would never participate in Elijah's. That's not that true That photo right there was Elijah's birthday, and was I took him. Work? I took him to the go karts, and he was supposed to meet us after work, and didn't even show up. As they kept trolling each other in the courtroom like it was another WWE wrestling match, mind-blowing revelations started to pop out. Believe me, these revelations will leave your jaws dropping from your mouth. My son. Um, we took like a safari ride and he said, oh, well, you, me and Ethan will ride on this one and you and Elijah can ride on that. And it just hurts my son's feelings because he never shows that extra step to she where- She doesn't enforce me as a father figure. I'm the father that's there. he's been in his life since he was two years there, old exactly. and he should take that extra long, step on his own. After Mrs. Johnson was done throwing shades at her husband in the courtroom, it was Mr. Johnson's turn to spill the beans. And my God, did he have a lot to say about Mrs. Johnson and their 12-year-old boy. It was like a love series that was unending. Elijah is disrespectful to me, to yeah, her, but he's dis to, so you everyone, like, to everyone, to everyone. The rants go on and on, and Mr. Johnson keeps pouring out his mind like a wounded lion. Does it end there? Of course not. Mrs. Johnson, filled with rage, jumps into the ring again and starts throwing shots at her husband. She even calls him a kid. These two can't wait to rip each other apart in the courtroom. He disrespects everybody. He disrespects his brother. He disrespects me, his mother. He talks back. When me and him were left alone with me, him, and my other son, and they're fighting for about two hours straight, nonstop. She comes home. I tell her what happened. I tell her that they're not listening. And instead of disciplining the kids, she fights with me. He's the one acting like he's 12, too. Mrs. Johnson's dad walks up to the stage and drops bombs on bombs countering every single word Mr. Johnson says. It was almost like her dad was her husband's biggest oppie. Um, I see Elijah being left out on a lot of things. Um, um, the ice cream, uh, you ask Ethan to pick up your room. It's like, would you pick up your room? What's wrong with you? Why don't so you- So why are we here for the way you talk to Ethan? You know, talk to him like a human being, not like an animal that did something wrong. Man just stood there, throwing heavy blows at Mr. Johnson. It was a tug of war and nobody wanted to be beaten. Knowing Mr. Johnson, you could bet he was ready for his comeback. As soon as Mrs. Johnson's dad was done talking, boom! He came with his comebacks that hit like bullets shot by a firing squad. Doesn't, wait, 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 wait. Doesn't that go You're for both? grandfather. Doesn't yes. that go for both kids though? Wouldn't that go for both children, not just Elijah? Like what Ethan, my son, he does the same thing. He babies Elijah. Oh, it'll should, be okay. Shouldn't yell at Ethan oh, it'll be like okay. That. You yell at him. Your daughter will admit so it. So now you're saying the moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty as to whether their marriage was going to be saved or shattered for good. Time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. Is it safe to say that we're going to work on this marriage? Yes. Yes. Wonderful, so we won't be needing this, right? Right. right. Fantastic. <laughs> Trust me, you and I both know we never want to be in his shoes. After having so much suspicion, feeling like he was being lied to, having some doubts that he wasn't the dad of their little girl, he dragged his girl's ass to court to find out the truth. Hold on to your seats, folks. We're about to have some real child battle drama. Rights as a potential father to the child in question today, 
two-year-old Angel Bryant were basically stolen from you. Yes, Your Honor. Now jumping right into the love triangle, or should I say, the triangle of heartbreaks. It all started on New Year's night. Sounds romantic, right? I bet your jaws are about to drop soon. Mr. Green met Miss Duncan that sweet evening, and as the gentleman that he is, took her to his house for some coffee. And I would say, have a good time if you know what I mean. How did I meet her? Well, it was New Year's night. She was out, I was out, of course. I saw her staggering a little bit, walking home alone from the club. I took her home, and then we just talked for a little bit, exchanged numbers. I can't be the only one who thought something fishy was gonna happen, or was I? Well, after getting all mushy with Miss Duncan, he thought he had met the love of his life. The bombshell is about to drop. She had another secret guy who she also happened to be having a good time with. Ooh. Miss Duncan would, for sure, win the award for being a sleek lady. He knew I was talking to someone, but I told him we broke up, but I was still talking to him. All right, so, so you, you, you basically lied and told him you weren't talking to the guy anymore, but you were. Yes. Going forward in their love drama, Miss Duncan found out she was pregnant. I sure think that's too quick. Getting pregnant just a few months after she meets Mr. Green? Come on, that's just all shades of suspicious. Of course, Mr. Green got the first call, and the mind-blowing thing is that he wasn't excited about the news. He was trying to add the math, and all his brain could tell him was, how is this possible? Your Honor, I figured that if I'm supposed to be the child's father, I would have been there at the time of birth, and also my name would be on the birth certificate, Your Honor. As the tales of deceit keep unfolding, the truth starts to come to the surface. And trust me when I tell you, there's so much more. After having her baby, she comes out with a new story seven months after birth and tells Mr. Green that he might not be the father of the kid. Ouch. That's for sure going to leave a mark on his heart. It was like six or seven months down the road after doing her pregnancy. Then she told me, she said, well, the baby may not be yours. I was surprised this didn't turn into punching spray. Mr. Green came home with Miss Duncan and their little girl and met a guy waiting for them in the house. Let the drums roll in. The guy waiting for them was the other guy, who was also having a good time with Miss Duncan. Ding, ding, ding. Now that's wild. I don't know if it was a birthday or Mother's Day. Okay, I took her home and he was outside waiting for her. And that kind of hurt. And he said, I come to see my daughter, my daughter. I said, that's your daughter, that's my daughter. If you think that's all the juice in this story, hold on to your seats because I'm about to blow your mind. Another epic heartbreak for Mr. Green. She says she wasn't sure who had the kid, so she played both of them, hoping one of them would come true. Speechless is how I feel right now. The other guy was around all the way through my pregnancy. Really? Yes. Was he at the birth too? Yes. So after he didn't answer, then you called the other guy? Yes. I guess it's high time we brought this paternity war zone to a close. Will it be all nice, Mr. Green, who gets to go home saying, I'm the dad? Or would it be the other guy who was in the shadows having a good time with Miss Duncan? The answer to that question sits like a princess in the envelope. Let the truth be told. Mr. Ronald Green, you are not her father. Mr. Jones and Miss Dolis have to be the funniest couple on the paternity court show. Their love story bounces from cheating to lying to deceiving. You just name it. From one charade to the next, these two find themselves in court, dragging each other for who is the better parent. Buckle up, people. You're about to be dumbfounded by this couple's drama. Ms. Douglas, you are suing the father of your five children for a paternity test. Mr. Jones doesn't treat your daughter Cheyenne as his own and that he has always been suspicious He's not her biological father. Getting down into the bits of this drama, right from the beginning of the case, Miss Dolis admitted to cheating on Mr. Jones. She apparently slept with his cousin. Now that's all shades of crazy if you ask me. Here's the shocking thing. Mr. Jones was no saint. He was also cheating on her with her own cousin and one of his baby mamas. I would have lost my mind if I were the judge, honestly. Yes, Your Honor, I do, because I did make a mistake. I slept with this cousin, and the condom had broke. But before that, Tyrone was downstairs sleeping with my cousin. He was still having sex with his baby's mom. Just like in the movies, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Douglas met at a party. 
things got pretty freaky and interesting after that, and they ended up getting pretty intimate. Well, I saw that coming. Prepare to be wowed! After her cozy night with Mr. Jones, she met his cousin and voila, she went down on him too. How does that even happen? I met Tyrone actually at a party that happened downstairs in my building. I met him and his cousin almost the same night. Me and Tyrone got together the first night we watched movies. But we weren't together, we were just, we just had sex and after that he went back to his other baby's mom. Things were starting to get heated up in the courtroom with both of them staring into each other's eyes like it was about to be a bloodbath. Boom! Miss Dolis gets pregnant. Ring, ring, ring. She hits up and tells Mr. Jones that it's his baby. Things seem pretty nice, right? Well, let's burst some bubbles. What did you feel, Mr. Jones, when you heard, I'm pregnant and it's yours? I wasn't too sure about it when she told me, but I'm like, okay, when she did tell me, I'm like, okay, I'll basically, I'm gonna step up and do what I gotta do. She finally decides to open up two damn years later, telling Mr. Jones that she had a thing with his cousin. You could see the rage in his eyes, wondering where and how it all went down. Just like that, good baby daddy starts to play the role of I'm not sure this is my kid. I did tell you things were going to escalate. After my daughter was two, I ended up telling him the truth. So you go in and you smell, you know the cologne, your cousin, you say, okay, I know my cousin was here, but she denied everything, everything, everything. How long did it take you to tell the truth? Until you, after my daughter was two years old. Slowly, all hell starts to break loose. Miss Dolis spills the beans about Mr. Jones, telling the court how he wasn't there for her daughter and that he was taking care of his other kids with his baby mama. Yep, you had that right. Other kids. It's already a whole mess at this point. Everyone's asking, who's really telling the truth? When the baby was two, he went to Chicago with his other's baby mama. We were together then, and I'm pregnant with his son. How I knew he was in Chicago with his baby mama was she texted my phone like, oh, you're looking for your man? He's with me. You wonder why he's not calling your daughter? Because he's with me. Emotions are flying here and there. Hold your seats for another bombshell, people. Trust me, your ears aren't ready for this. These couple have had other kids before their daughter, and they aren't even married. Are these two a baby factory, or what's going on with them? You, you have five children, potentially, together. Was your relationship ever committed? Was it ever an important thing to either one of you? It's clear that these two had no trust for each other. Even after having more than one child together, they can't seem to bring themselves to trust each other. Why would they? I mean, after getting intimate with each other's cousins? That's beyond a far stretch. Seven months ago, he's still, he's still talking to women. I don't never talk to anybody first. After I find out he cheats on me, that's when I do it. But I really do want to be with him and I want to make a family for my five kids. Everything went from a peaceful conversation to a bloodbath with the couples throwing tantrums about who got intimate with whom and who couldn't be a good parent. Well, the moment of truth is finally here. Every single eye is placed on the judge as she's about to reveal the final verdict. Hold your breath. Mr. Jones, you are not fine. The doubts start to troll in and all hell starts to break loose. This frantic dad wants answers to the paternity puzzle that's been digging holes in his mind. Is he gonna get the answers he's looking for? Well, let's find out, shall we? It's about to be another bumpy ride of baby daddy drama. Ticket, you claim that when your son turned three, the defendant, your wife, admitted to you that you may not be his biological father, seeking a definitive answer today with hopes that your son is biologically. Now, Mr. Pickett and Miss Pickett sure do look like the cute couples we expect them to be, but hold up. There's more to see than meets the eye. These two have been caught up in so much baby drama. Guess what, people? They're even separated. Must have been one hell of a ride for these two. During that vacation, you know, we had separated. So when I get back from the vacation, I go to like different houses that she's at and periodically I see this same dude at the different houses. Don't forget, these two have been separated for a while. Mr. Pickett takes a vacation for work purposes, at least so he claims. He gets back from his vacation and pays a visit to Miss Pickett to check on their son. That's when things start to get a little tricky. Trust me, you aren't ready for the mystery that's about to unfold. At the house with your, with your mom, she, and my son, he's like five years old. He says, 
I think that's my mom's boyfriend. I'm like, ah, oh, for real? So I ask her, she denies it. Now, I hate these extended vacations, Your Honor. I took another one. Mr. Pickett with the Mr. Innocent role continues to explain his side of the story. And for some reason, it just doesn't make any sense. It's so confusing, Judge Lauren tells him to back it up. The things that popped out of his mouth were totally mind-blowing. I say, let's mend it together. We cool. You're my friend. You're my lover. You're my wife. These are our kids. We already did this. I done wrong, you done wrong. Infidelity is all around the world, so we're not upset about that. After being apart for God knows how long, they decide to give it another try and get back together. Yep, we all know where that's leading. Of course, things seem to be okay at first, but soon after, it all turns into wildfire. Things spiral out of control, and trust me when I tell you, it's worse than you can imagine. Okay, so everything's good. We're back together. Now, in the back of my mind, I wish I could blow this little thought out. So I you're back together? We back, we back, it's cool. So I ask her, she denies. I ask her, she denies. I'm what like, do you oh, ask her? I'm asking her, is these my kids? The little mysteries start to find their way out of the little corners, and things start to take an unexpected turn. Mr. Pickett finds out that his wife was getting intimate with another guy just before his kid was born. Oops! Things are about to get real juicy, guys. I can bet on it. Just based on what I told him, yes, he does have a reason, but I did wait three years later to tell him, but I let him know before he got before back from Before I got from the extended vacation. vacation. This guy had to be the most dramatic man to ever walk the planet Earth. At every single junction of his narration, there was always a hilarious reaction from him. Even Judge Lauren couldn't hide her amusement. Now hold up! All that laughter was about to turn into a real hot mess. After all this time, this is my That's exact... How you did it? I did just like this. And I was in short pants, because we were supposed to go swimming, and I just lost the whole swimming mode. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And then I was That's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Whoa. And then that was like, I walked outside. <laughs> Now, Miss Pickett wasn't having her best day in court, trust me. You could read it off her face that she couldn't wait for the ground to open up and just swallow her. But come on, she cheated. I mean, it's only right that she felt that way. But is Mr. Pickett in a forgiving mood? I strongly doubt that. That's why I stopped the man and I told him this is not right. And I, but, this is not but, right. Miss Pickett, the fact that you waited three years to tell him, that is a lot. Well, the suspense is finally over and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Pickett and Miss Pickett. All eyes on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks. Mr. Pickett, you are his father. Oh yeah. Well, I got some friends. Hold on. Ah. Now this is going to be one epic paternity showdown. I mean cheating on your boyfriend with your ex-boyfriend is one thing, but cheating on your boyfriend with your ex-boyfriend and getting pregnant? She's very lucky to be alive. Let's dive into the juicy parts of the heartbreaking love saga, shall we? You say that a few years back, you were suddenly called away on family business. You claim the defendant, Ms. Monroe, invited her former lover to move into your family home. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. You think we've seen it all? Trust me, I'm quite sure you've never seen something like this before. This screams all shades of crazy in this relationship. Mr. Matlock took a vacation, leaving his girlfriend back in the house. Now prepare yourselves, because this will blow your mind. Back in 2006, when me and Miss Monroe first got together, mm -hmm. she knew I was back and forth from Fort Smith to Fayetteville because I have a son down in that area. Back in 07, I was down there for a week. No, you said yeah, you, no, it no, was you a said week. you were going to be no, gone a weekend was, and you it were it gone a month. It was a week. You're you lying. Were gone a it month. was a week. Now, while he was away, Miss Monroe, his girlfriend moved her ex into his house. Yup, you heard that right. She moved her ex boyfriend into her boyfriend's house. Crazy, right? There's more. She didn't act like she cared or she was sorry about it. I can tell you're screaming right now. He told me he was going to be gone for a weekend. So after the weekend, of course, being a girlfriend, you're going to care about somebody's well-being, wonder where they are if they're not calling you. So of course, yes, I did call him. And then he never answered my calls. And this went on for a whole month. To make the situation even messier, she didn't just move her ex into the house. She was also sleeping with him. I got to tell you, she has some nerve doing stuff like that. Mr. Matlock comes back from his vacation and things fly out of the roof. 
we talked on the phone about, because I about wanted the you. situation. I, didn't want him. I had feeling for her. I've been knowing I've been knowing her since we was young, since 12, 13. So we worked out the whole situation. We talked about it, we worked it out. I eventually moved back in the house, picking up a sexual relationship with her again. The heavy bomb is about to drop into the mix. Now, after forgiving her and settling their differences, they go on to be lovebirds once again. Is this gonna last? Hell no! Mr. Matlock finds out she's pregnant from his sister. Boom! That's right, she didn't tell him, she told his sister. She really has some real nerve. Right. She and looked at me say? and I said, was honest. you're not the father. That's what she said, you are not the father. So I'm not taking care of somebody else's baby and you tell me that that baby is not my baby. So once you heard that. Now the heart crushing revelation doesn't just stop there. He asks her who the father of the child is, and she tells him point blank that he isn't the dad. Hold up, I'm not the dad? It felt like all the air in the room disappeared and was replaced with anger. Mr. Matlock was definitely not going to stick around to raise a kid that wasn't his. Once you say you are not the father to a man, that baby ain't mine no more. I didn't hear from her. <laughs> they kept arguing, going back and forth about how they weren't there for each other. It was nothing short of insane in that courtroom. You could tell that these two weren't so certain they wanted to be together anymore. I, I was back in town taking care of my son, doing what a father's supposed to be. And oh, if you'd have been real about it, if you would, if you would have been real about it in, in the beginning, I would have been there for you. What? There's no going back now. After paying for child support, he wants to know if all that money was not wasted on the wrong kid. Will it be a double dose of daddy drama, or will the clouds of uncertainty finally clear? The key to the truth was in the envelope. Here goes nothing. Ruth was in. Mr. Matlock, the wait is over. You are not. I knew it. I knew it. The